Tell me a little bit about the other guys. No Joel. How important were Montrez yeah, man, and so Tobias? Good, Mr. Do <laughs> Mr. Do something. Mr. Do something. They called D'Anthony Melton. Mr. Do something. And you'll understand by the time we're done here. But first, let's understand the Sixers have a shot hierarchy. What that means is there's a general shot diet that they try to follow in each game. It revolves around Joel Embiid, who takes upwards of 20 shots a game. When Harden isn't playmaking and distributing, he looks to score, which usually equates to about 15 shots per game. Somewhere between those two is Tyrese, and Tobias gets his 12 plus tries a game. All that to say, when the game comes to Melton, he's got to maximize his opportunities because it's a lot of shots to go around. Not only is he efficient with his limited shots, but also he's the perfect complement to a core constructed as such. He can shoot, create from the perimeter, get to the basket. Bottom line, he can find his own shot and move the rock as well. That's crucial for the Sixers because they can use him in a multitude of ways across different lineup combinations, and he'll just blend in. That's what makes this fit seamless. There's times when he creates his own offense, which is what the Sixers might need at the time, and then there's times when the offense comes to him. It's that being able to deliver on and off ball, which makes him a chameleon. In other words, he can adapt his game to the style that's being played on the court and still manage to contribute just as effectively. For example, do the offense a favor, move off ball, disorganize the defense, and find the open shooter who ranks third all-time in three-point makes. So you play him with Embiid, with Harden, with both, with neither, with just Maxi, with Maxi, but whatever, it doesn't matter. He just blends in. Double skip extra he's even been tremendous in a featured role where his individual responsibilities are heightened that would be starting in the absence of harden max tobias that adaptability of his is important because he's not going to spend all of his time alongside the starters and that means his role changes that could look like melton being a primary scoring option as opposed to a third or fourth one which also means different responsibilities, more ball handling, different personnel, more shots, different spots. I think back to November 22nd, when the shorthanded Sixers hosted the Brooklyn Nets at full health and DeAnthony Melton started. He had the ball in his hands plenty. He took 16 shots, second to Tobias. He dropped 22 points, dished out four assists, and helped engineer a win, a monumental win, over the Brooklyn Nets. The Sixers are 11-4, dating back to November 22nd. He's rose to the occasion many times throughout this season, solidifying that second unit. Now let's look more specifically at what he brings to this offense. Embiid battles for post positioning as Houston shades help and commits to the double. It's Mr. Do Something in the corner who makes the Rockets pay for that. Here, watch the Lakers defense shrink because of Embiid. Harden makes the extra pass, beating the rotation. And again, it's that right side corner. They're all worried about Embiid. He makes the skip. And Harden again beats the rotation, goes to that right side corner where Melton's camping. Look, the big guy fights for positioning. Detroit doubles off of the wing. Now there's a two on one. That three ball opens the game up a bit for his teammates. Here's what I mean. This is a team who capitalizes on favorable one-on-one -on -one matchups and number advantages, two-on-ones for instance. The more room there is to work with, the more James Harden, Joel Embiid, Tobias, to name a few, can be themselves. And Melton's one of those guys who spaces the floor out and makes the game easier for him. Check it out, Embiid's in his office, fourth quarter three-point game. There's some ball watching, but the closest defender doesn't double. That gives Embiid the opportunity to do what he does in space. Another late game situation where help, or I'd imagine a hard double, 
doesn't come off of that wing where Melton is. Overtime, one point game. We're noticing a trend, right? Melton's on that wing, and B gets busy. Houston shades, but they don't commit. There was a stint where the Sixers were without Joel Embiid, and they played small. I say that to say, six foot two guard DeAnthony Melton had a pretty unique role. He was the ball screener or the primary ball handler, which is almost always James Harden. It's quick, but you'll see a trap, and then Melton attacks the switch. This is pretty cool considering most screeners are bigs, but it makes sense. He can score, so you gotta stay with him. P.J. Tucker isn't scaring anybody, especially not off of the dribble. Here comes the screen, Melton slips, Harden reads the late switch, and then Mr. Do Something finishes through contact. Melton screens, Houston switches, now watch Eric Gordon and Coach Silas. They know what's coming. Now here's, here's really where that nickname comes from. Defensively, he's an alien. Close to a six foot nine wingspan and crazy bounce. So he switched on to Julius Randle and he won't give him his left. Instead, he got in there clean. Look, high ball screen, he switched on to Siakam. He fights over the Scotty screen. You better protect that ball around him. I don't know whose man Cat is, but it's not DeAnthony Melton's. And yet, yep, Mr. Deuce, he's sneaky. Watch this, patient, patient, got you at the top. Didn't even know he was there. Full court pressure, he's on OG's hip, he gets cut off, but stays with the play. That anticipation is nuts, I'm not gonna lie. So keep an eye on him during this possession. He follows Kobe White until he meets the screen, and then he switches. I know some of you play Madden. Perfect timing user pick, took that shit. And pay, watch this right here. He's got this subtle tactic, which keeps him engaged off ball. So what he'll do, is use his body and his hands to keep track of where both he and the player he's defending are on the court. That way he can watch the ball react and rotate without getting back to it. And although the Sixers are still an underwhelming rebounding team, his impact on the game, you know, screening, finding his own shot, creating, defending, translates on the glass as well. These are the habits of a winning player. And it's these habits that have helped the Sixers secure some Ws. Under 30 seconds, he tracks the board. Curtains. He rotates, puts a body on Aiton, and grabs the board. Tie game fourth quarter. You'll see him crash from the top of the key, outwork two opponents, and create a go-ahead opportunity for his team. Sixers hold a five-point lead in OT. He fills the paint and helps put the game on ice. Mr. Deuce. He's about as solid as they come. I mean, we're talking career highs across the board, points per game, rebounds, assists, steals, etc., which are a product of what he's done with this opportunity. That's Mr. Do Something. That's it for me. As always, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you could, comment down below, like the video, share it with a friend, get at me on all the socials, subscribe. I appreciate it all. Look, if you're staying solid, you know me. I salute you. Stay safe. Stay solid. We'll talk soon.